Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Uh, this video was requested by a few people here in the comments and direct messages of the cost breakdown of the LS3 350Z. Kind of a rough breakdown of what it would cost you to do yourself if uh, you were to have a chassis ready like this and uh, just swap a V8 in. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, little cinematic there. Um, as you can see, everything turned out really, really good. Uh, like the all the contrast with the blue and everything, in my opinion, looks really, really good. Uh, so we're going to get to how much everything costs here and uh, we're going to break it down. So first off, I want to start with if the this I got a new mic set up here. It's a wireless mic. Maybe it sounds a lot better. I'm noticing that in a lot of my other videos, it was very echoey in the garage, but I think that we got her dialed in here with a wireless mic. Maybe it'll be a little easier for you guys to hear me. So besides that, uh, we're going to start off with the main components that uh, this swap entailed here. All this is based off of Canadian dollars, obviously, because we live in Canada. Uh, so it, things are going to be a little bit more expensive because I've calculated a, like a bit of the shipping costs and whatnot in here in total of what I spent like to get everything shipped to me. So it may be different, maybe a little bit, uh, a couple thousand off or a thousand off if you're in the States or however you decide to do it. But this is just, in my opinion, the proper way to do a LS swap into a vehicle. Like what I mean by proper is in doing everything right, not having to cut anything, not hacking anything. I didn't want to cut this car up because it's in really good shape. It's very low kilometers. I didn't want to, you know, chop it all up and, you know, hack it all up and everything else. So, so in my opinion, as well as doing everything right is making the dashes work like making the rpm gauges work the oil pressure like all the original stuff no check engine lights on the dash that to me is uh is proper setup um no cutting corners or anything or cheaping out on parts so we're gonna start off with the Siki swap kit so Siki manufacturing was the one uh, who i got the kit from there's loj swap kits there's uh, uh i'm not sure what the other one is out there but i think there's two or three other swap kits out there but Siki swap kit i've heard the best things about the Siki swap kit it included the drive shaft uh, the motor mounts the headers uh, adapter plate from the ls3 to the stock transmission that i had the cd09 uh, the custom oil pan to fit for this system, oil filter relocate kit, the harness, uh, they teamed up with wiring specialties, so they're kind of collabing together, uh, the power steering feed, feed lines, and as well as the transmission mount. So that was basically, I probably missed a few things in there, but that was the majority of it. That kit came out to $9,800 for the swap kit alone. 
And then the next thing up that we have is the built LS3 that I have in this car. I was actually fortunate enough to know a friend that builds these engines and I kind of helped him out and I was a huge help with building this engine with him too as well. So that helped me out big time as well. Uh, but we got forged rods, uh, heavy duty push rods, upgraded rockers, uh, ported heads, stage three cam, and that engine uh, alone, all brand new component, brand new block, brand new heads, that was $10,000. And uh, next up we have an E38 ECU from Wiring Specialties. So they were able to offer a VATS remove uh, ECU. So what I mean by VATS is it takes out the security, the anti-theft stuff, everything's ready to go. Um, so that ECU was $650. The fuel pump I got from LOJ, they, I actually got it from a person that I knew and he was doing a return system. So this way I went with a return less system. So just a drop in uh, fuel pump from LOJ, they make it, it supports up to like 550 horsepower, which is what typically this setup would be. So that fuel pump was $500. Uh, next up, we have the Serial 9 shifter relocate. Since the Siki manufacturing motor mounts and their kit has pushed the engine as far back as possible to the firewall on this car, it's about six inches further back, I believe. The trans and everything goes back further, so you're going to need a shifter relocate for that. Serial 9 makes an unreal product for that. I have a previous video showing me install it on a transmission. If you're looking to do that, it's a great, you, the adjustability on it is just endless, uh, really good quality. Uh, so next up we have the valve covers and coil packs. Uh, so these are MSD street fires and the valve covers that take them from Holly, uh, those two together were $850. So next up, that is just the amount of stuff just to kind of get you going here. And then there's always, there's going to be a crap ton of more stuff that to, to do to complete the project. So right now we're sitting at about $22,600 for just to get you started. The next thing we have here is accessory drive components. Uh, the harmonic balancer, I got an upgraded one of those because uh, higher horsepower numbers, you get more vibration and everything else. So that was $475 for that alternator from GM uh, that was $860 I have previously bought aftermarket alternators for this and sometimes you can get away with aftermarket stuff sometimes you can't I went through two of them already and they've one overcharged completely the other one just completely stopped charging and I'm like okay so let's just get the alternator from uh, GM themselves it was a little harder to get took a while but that's why it was $860 belt tensioner $110 Alternator bracket, $60. Power steering bracket, $55. Idler pulley, $60. So all the serpentine system, that all worked out to $1,620. The next up we have is miscellaneous parts. That's Mishimoto slim fans. Uh, you don't have to run these, but I wanted to because there leaves a lot of room up in the front here and I wanted to keep things as simple as possible. That was $340. Oil pressure adapter, so it can run to the PCM and to my factory dash, so I could read the original oil pressure through the original Nissan gauge. That was $70. Uh, coolant hoses, I designed this whole coolant system myself. Uh, I went on Pegasus Auto Racing Supplies. They supplied me with everything that I needed. Made it very easy for me to do. So that's heater core lines, upper rad hoses, um, aluminum piping, stuff like that. That all worked out to $1,100. Power steering return line, I ran it over into my original system. So I didn't have the GM reservoir up top here. As you guys know that the LS3 usually have a Alton or a uh, power steering uh, reservoir up top and I didn't really like the look of that. So that was, uh, that return line was $70. The mass airflow sensor, $160. Air filter, $60. Clutch fluid, $35. Aluminum brackets, $30. Coolant, $100. So all the miscellaneous parts there worked out to $1,965. Uh, next up here, we have the tuning for the whole system here. Uh, that was $1,000, including a licensing a ECU, because usually you have to pay to license the ECU, and usually the tuners will work that into their cost, but tuning was $1,000. I had somebody come down and do a street tune with me. Uh, soon enough, I'll be taking this car to the dyno to get the numbers down and to get everything fine, fine tuned. Next up was the exhaust, uh, exhaust material. So I was fortunate enough to know and have a close friend that was able to help me out with a lot of this exhaust on here. He was a fabricator and uh, I really only had to pay for the material, which was pretty cool and I was pretty thankful for that. The exhaust material was $1,450. 
anywhere else if you were to get this whole exhaust system fabbed up like full three inch and depending on material you use and how experienced the fabricator is that can run you like two thousand three thousand dollars depending on how much time they spend on it so i was pretty fortunate about that we come and just about wrap everything up here so obviously with a swap like this you're going to find some things i'm going to include the trial and errors that i had obviously uh, you know there isn't every little bit of information on internet so you just got to try things for yourself from time to time so i went through two ecus i had to license two ecus before i found out that the tuning wasn't going to work with them uh, they were older ecus so they weren't going to work properly with my dash so I made the mistake by buying an ECU off of Kijiji and it wasn't the right one. That was $500. And then the ECU number two was $260 from eBay. That didn't work out either. So in licensing both of those uh, ECUs was $250. So rat right there is about $1,000, $1,000 and just a few little mistakes. Out of the whole swap, just if that's the only mistakes that you know were made or trial and error stuff, you don't get your money back it's pretty good you got to expect to have that stuff when you're doing a swap like this so that was one thousand about a thousand dollars like i said so total with everything here that i've spent on this swap here is twenty nine thousand six hundred and forty dollars uh six hundred and forty five dollars for everything all tied together running great streetcar all dialed in that's how much it costs but that being said i was able to actually sell a lot of the v6 components here that were originally in it from the VQ that I didn't need anymore. So not everybody's going to have this benefit of, you know, being able to sell it. Sometimes usually people do a swap if they blow their engine or whatever. But in my case, I was able to sell the engine out of this car uh, for $2,800, which I thought was pretty good, just a bare engine. Um, and then all the other sold components to do with that V6, like headers, flywheel, uh, high flow cats, cold air intake, uh, harness cover intake, uh, Y pipe, starter, uh, throttle body, drive shaft, pretty much sold 95% of the components that I didn't need from the old setup on Kijiji or on Marketplace or whatever. And that was pretty good. So all that uh, sold, I was able to get $5,335 back after selling that through this process. So after me selling all those components, I'm sitting at $24,310, all said and done, including the sale items. So in my opinion, that's pretty good for your power numbers that you can get out of this. And it's cool because it's a swap car. In my opinion, I think a swap car is way cooler because it's a little different than what you normally see on the road. You know, I was thinking about turboing the VQ35 that was in this, but, but by the time I, I bought a turbo kit, I don't know, you get a really good tur turbo kit. You can spend 10 grand on that. Uh, you got to build the engine. That could be another 10 grand if you, uh, you know, depending on what you put into it. So you're sitting at about 20 grand there and you could get, you know five five six hundred depending you know it's it's unlimited you can get five six hundred horse or if you were to turbo the stock engine in it for about 10 to 15 grand uh you don't get too too much out of the stock engines on these i mean there's some guys that are running pretty decently high numbers but to me i think the v8 swap is definitely worth it uh, all naturally aspirated and you get the torque and you get the cool sound and it's just custom so in my opinion that's worth every dollar to me so that just about wraps it up guys uh thanks for following along if you haven't seen my previous videos of me swapping everything in here i've got the whole process on youtube in my previous videos so if you have any questions or whatever leave them down in the comment below like dislike let me know if i uh spent too much money or if somebody can do it cheaper there's always going to be somebody out there stay tuned we're going to do a dyno video with this soon and uh, we'll do some more videos on the road so thanks for sticking by Leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, talk to you guys soon. Peace.